Here we are on my server called Cloud One. I'll have to reauthenticate here as Sysman. And you get to Resource Manager in Cloud Control via the Administration menu. First, of course, you have to connect to your database. I've got my P site target that we were just on, but now we're administering it from another server. We go to Administration, Resource Manager. We're asked to authenticate in that database. I will do so as Sys at SysDBA. And we come to this page here, Getting Started with Database Resource Manager. First thing is you can go to Administrative Privileges to specify delegated administrators. You may want to give somebody who doesn't have full sys or system ability on your Oracle server the privileges necessary to configure Resource Manager. It's delegated administration, a good idea. It happens all the time in the Microsoft world. You might want to consider that. And to that point, if you are a SQL Server database administrator, you're probably thinking, well, this Resource Manager business is a lot like the Resource Governor in SQL Server. And you know what? You're absolutely correct. I know that Database Resource Manager has been around a lot longer than the SQL Server Governor. I have a feeling Microsoft took a leaf and got some inspiration from Oracle when they developed their resource governor system. Anyway, besides delegated administration, which is just a tip or an optional thing, we have links for each of our components here. There's two for consumer groups, one defining the groups themselves, a second for mapping those groups using rules. Let me show you what I mean. First, let's go to consumer groups, and you see the list of all of the built-in groups. Sys group is definitely something you need to remember. This is the consumer group for system administrators. The other one that's crucial is the other users group. That is your catch-all. Note that it's not even in the list here. I don't see it for some reason. It's interesting that it's not here. But other users is dynamically populated by anybody who isn't explicitly or automatically assigned to another consumer group. We also have one called default consumer group. And if we select it and click edit, it brings you to an edit screen where you can adjust. Let's read the description here. Consumer group for users not assigned to any consumer group. Okay, so default consumer group is the other users group. I just got confused with the name difference. When you build a consumer group, you specify the scheduling policies, round robin or run to completion. The most common option here is round robin. That ensures that each member of a consumer group gets equal access to the server. Otherwise, if you do run to completion and you have 10 sessions and one session's running really long, other sessions may get hung up waiting for the one to complete. So round robin, like I said, is the most common. And then notice here that for a consumer group, you can populate this manually. Users permitted to run in this consumer group. And if we click Add, it takes us here to a screen where we can choose a user, select, and manually add that user to the group. Now, I also want to show you the so Show SQL. So under the hood, if you're interested in PLSQL, and by that point, not to get sidetracked, we at Pluralsight have a number of courses on PLSQL. The package that governs all of this stuff is DBMS Resource Manager. There's a whole bunch, actually there's DBMS Resource Manager, there's DBMS Resource Manager Privs, which is what we're doing here if you're setting up a consumer group association for a user. Let's come back to Administration Resource Manager, the consumer group mappings. These are rules that enable the resource manager to automatically assign sessions to computer groups. We'll talk more about this in just a moment when, it, when we come back to the slide. Let's go back. Here's the node for plans, and we have a separate page for statistics or monitoring. 